Pinellas County has 35 miles of beautiful beaches that visitors and residents enjoy year-round. But sometimes an algae bloom called red tide develops out in the Gulf of Mexico, discoloring the water, killing fish and marine life, and causing breathing issues for beachgoers. Today in Discovering Pinellas, we're gonna talk about what red tide is, why it happens, and if there's anything we can do to reduce its impacts. My first stop was at Pinellas County Public Works, where I talked with Kelly Levy, who manages our countywide red tide response. Kelly, thanks so much for having us today. Well, thanks for having me, Josh. Can you tell us in simple terms, what is red tide? So red tide is a harmful algal bloom, and in Southwest Florida, that red tides are typically caused by a species called Carinia brevis. And it is considered to be a red tide because of the way it discolors the water. Uh, when it's in a lighter bloom, it, it does take on that red color. However, when it gets really concentrated, it can look more like coffee. Can you give us some background? Is, is red tide a new phenomenon? It has happened for, for centuries. It's not something new, but in modern times, it's become more frequent. And a, a lot of that is driven by human nutrients that get into the water, like fertilizer and um, grass clippings and other sources of nutrients. How does the county respond when we have a red tide in our area? Well, the county will start ramping up activities, including monitoring and reporting. So we want the community to know what's happening. Um, we'll be looking at uh, various sources of information so that we can approximate what we might need to be prepared to do. If fish kills start to occur, we will hire a contractor to come in and remove the fish from the water, from canals, from the beaches, in order to keep our community safe. So the big thing people want to know is, is it safe to go to the beach during a red tide? Well, for that question, I'd like to refer you over to Tom Iovino with the health department. He is the perfect person to answer that question. Kelly answered some important questions, but now I needed to find out if it's safe for me to go to the beach and swim during a red tide. I went to talk with Tom Iovino at the Florida Department of Health in Pinellas County. Tom, thanks so much for talking to us today. Well, thanks for coming on out. So the biggest question people have is, is it safe to go to the beach during a red tide? And the answer is, it depends. Um, if the concentrations of red tide are high in the area and the wind's blowing offshore, you're okay because typically anything that might irritate you would be going out over the Gulf. But if it's onshore, you might notice things like your uh, throat starting to bother you, um, your eyes might sting, your nose might be irritated. And for people who have asthma or emphysema, it could be potentially dangerous. So if the concentrations are high and the wind's blowing onshore, it's a good idea to kind of avoid the beach that day. The other thing people want to know is, can you go swimming if there's red tide around? Um, you could certainly go swimming if there's red tide around, but if the concentrations of red tide are high, you might want to consider skipping the beach that day. And um, certainly if you start to feel uh, any irritation, that's just best to stay away from the water. Um, if you see any dead fish, don't swim near them because they have fine bones that can actually scratch you or scrape your skin, and that can lead to bigger problems. To get a better perspective on the magnitude of a red tide bloom, I had to get up in the air. Most people only see the impact of red tide when it's near the beach, but blooms can extend for miles offshore. My last stop was at Pinellas County Environmental Management, where I met with Anna Marie Rivera to find out how we can take action to reduce the spread of red tide. What are some things that we all can do to reduce the impact of red tide? Sure, so even though red tide is naturally occurring in the Gulf, it is an algae and it feeds on excess nutrients in the waterways. So we as residents, we wanna make sure that we're helping to reduce those nutrients from getting into our waterways. So there's specifically four things. It's reducing um, your fertilizer use, making sure that when you're mowing your lawn that those grass clippings get blown back into the lawn so that they don't wash down the storm drain and end up in our waterways. Irrigation wise, if you're using reclaimed water, just know that every time you water your lawn, you're essentially putting down nutrients on your lawn. So you really want to reduce the amount of additional fertilizer that you add because you're already getting it through your irrigation system. And lastly, pet waste is a source of nutrients. It's also a source of bacteria. So we really ask that people pick up after their pets. Any uncollected pet waste is going to wash into our storm drains and, and get into our waterways and add bacteria 
and in those excess nutrients as well. And all of those things together, um, we actually have a, an education campaign called Don't Feed the Beast. And, and that really is it. Those are the things that people can do to not feed the beast that is the, the red tide bloom. We can all help reduce the impact of red tide by picking up after our pets, reducing our use of fertilizers, and making sure to pick up grass clippings so they don't get into our waterways. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can let us know what kind of videos you'd like to see on this channel, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.